back to Ohio. We begin with breaking news. Good afternoon and welcome to Fox 8 News at noon. I'm Gabe Spiegel. And good afternoon. I'm Stephanie Schaefer. Yes, great news. And it is breaking at this very moment as we are learning President Trump making a major announcement regarding the GM plant here in Lordstown. Now, the president just tweeted this information. Great news for Ohio. Just spoke to Mary Barra, that's the CEO of General Motors, who informed me that subject to a UAW agreement, etc., GM will be selling their beautiful Lordstown plant to workhorse. Essentially, the, the engines, the motors' engines, are in the wheels. They're in the wheels, in all four wheels. It's Lordstown, Ohio. They make them in Lordstown, Ohio. You know, Senator Portman. Uh, we are, we've been working on this very long and very hard. Don't go early, Ron. Uh, you ready, Ron? Okay. Three, two, one, go. Meantime, President Trump continuing to tweet this morning about GM as he urges the automaker to reopen its Lordstown, Ohio plant. This morning tweeting, General Motors and the UAW are going to start talks in September, October. Why wait? Start them now. I want jobs to stay in the USA and want Lordstown, Ohio, and one of the best economies of our history, in our history, opened or sold to a company who will open it fast. Car companies are all coming back to the U.S., so is everyone else. We now have the best economy in the world, the envy of all. Get that big, beautiful plant in Ohio open now. Close a plant in China or Mexico where you invested so heavily pre-Trump, but not in the USA. Bring jobs home. Always fun to read the Trump tweets. <laughs> Guys, um, Lordstown, Ohio, population 3,000. It's in the northeast part of the state, sort of by like Cleveland, Akron region. And while the unemployment rate over the last, I don't know, few years has improved in Trumbull County, which is where it is in Ohio, it's still 7.7%, as you can see the tick up there. So elevated, and in Lordstown in particular, I mean, this, plant, this town is built around the GM plant. So obviously a devastating local story, but in the broader picture, you know, this is part of the five North American plants that, that GM is closing. Americans are choosing SUVs over sedans. I mean, they're just pure economics that are behind this decision as well, which are part of the story. Discussion about the circular nature of some of these policies. His tweet about keeping plants open is something you could arguably see from Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, yeah. someone it's on the It's not very capitalistic. Right. Um, but, you know, keep in mind, Ohio is a key state for him. It was in the last election. It will be in 2020. He's there today. He was in Youngstown, which is the, the bigger town, closer to Lordstown, during 2017, saying, don't leave. We are going to get these auto plants open and keep these auto jobs. So this is one of his, you know, campaign promises. It's also an example. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Lauren Fix, and this is the 2022 Lordstown Endurance. Now, you may have not heard of Lordstown before, but they originally purchased the Lordstown, Ohio plant. They then sold it to Foxconn, who is building the vehicles for them. Now, this vehicle is a work truck, so you will see them on the road, but this is a vehicle you could buy yourself. Now, the idea is for them to sell it to the fleets, and eventually they'll have six other different models coming out. There will be additional variants coming in the near future, but right now, this is what you're gonna be seeing on the road, so start looking for the Lordstown Endurance. We have reviewed other vehicles that are- Yeah, this is MXUX. Now we're gonna, that was a bit of background on Lordstown. By the way, the truck was nominated for truck of the year. We're gonna come up with that in a minute. Uh, this is the Lordstown Motors Mirage. This is by Hindenburg Research and published March 12, 2021. Um, what this, this report crashed uh, Lordstown stock along with a pretty decisive move by BlackRock. Uh, also moving it into a, a 
penny stock after after uh, there were negotiations going on to um, revive the stock price and do the agreement with Foxconn, which was scuttled by Foxconn. We know that. But let's just stop uh, with the history here and just for a minute talk about uh Hindenburg, because there is new information on this. What Hindenburg said basically was that the orders were all mirages. I'm going to refute that in a second. Uh, they mentioned a battery fire, which Lord Stown responded to saying, yeah, it was a prototype. We were testing it. That's what prototypes are for. Um, I also said that employees said there is no way they could build a truck, of course, as you can see from the prior information, you know, the truck did go. It's in production. The production is paused right now. So, and it was nominated for Truck of the Year. And if it were not in production, it could have never got that nomination. Now, the question I have always had is, what is Hindenburg's angle on this? What Hindenburg does is they... They have nine people working for them. You think it's a big detective agency in a high-rise. It's nine people. So one of them's the janitor, that's eight. One of them's the secretary, that's seven. And one of them's the receptionist. So they got six researchers working there. And one of them's the boss. He doesn't do anything. So they got five people, basically, in a boiler room making phone calls, is what Hindenburg does. Now, they recently... Uh, and I am not an expert on this, but I'm going to show some video on this from a uh, reporting that's going on in India. The Adani Group was a target also, I believe it's the Adani Group, of Hindenburg. And you think to yourself, what the heck are they targeting a Indian company for? Well, uh, there's allegations, and I'm just going to say these are allegations. I'm just going to report on this that um, this involved uh, a political motive about a candidate who was elected, who was associated with this company. I believe, again, you must do your own research on this. And they are trying to undo that election or tarnish this candidate by publishing this Hindenburg report. This is what the reports from India allege. The reports from India also allege that George Soros participated in all of this and also benefited from it. And George Soros has an international lobbying, uh, you know, uh, firm, so on and so forth, a non NGO, nonprofit, whatever you want to call it, that is pro-democracy and uh, there are inferrals that he initiated all this because he does not agree with the outcome of the uh, election in India. Um, I'm going to show video and by the way basically what Hindenburg does is they write a report uh, based on their so-called research before they publish it, they have subscribers that pay them a subscription fee. They released the report to the subscribers first. So on Lordstown, they wrote the report, published on March 12, you know, March 10 or March 5. All their subscribers got the report. They took all their short positions on Lordstown, and then they published the, the report. Boom, the stock goes down. Everybody makes money. Also, it's used as a lever for political means, at least that's alleged in India. I have shown the associations here with Trump and uh, the Trump's role in creating Lordstown. I'm going to show statements from Soros, who is extremely anti-Trump. And this is not a political channel. I'm not endorsing any candidate. I am simply telling you what the facts are as I have uncovered them. So, um, I'm going to refute the main, the main uh, claim of this report is they had unsubstantiated orders, 
which the CEO at the time, Steve Burns, never said were orders. This was a market research project to gauge demand for the truck. And I'm going to show information that's going to prove that he was absolutely correct in his figures, Steve Burns was. Um, so uh, please take a look at the rest of the video. We're going to be moving on here to other sections. But this Indian news outlet, one I follow closely, which is prominent in India, is alleging an association between Soros and Hindenburg as well. Uh, they have reported that it seems as though in response to their allegations, Soros has gone on to form his own uh, Hindenburg research. So uh, it looks like someone could be covering their tracks. Uh, but uh, I'm going to present information on all of this as follows. Here, the way that you have characterized your pre-orders or reservations in the past, yeah. I mean, you called these on CNBC serious orders. Now, people would look at this and say, if you have a company that's not putting down a deposit, that doesn't have a fleet, but right. basically are collecting letters of interest, are those truly serious orders? Well, no, we've been, Phil, we've always been very clear, right? These are, these are just what they're intended to be, right? These are non-binding letter intents. They're called pre-orders out in the, in the kind of real world. So always classified them for that. And, and we have a lot of those pre-orders. I think, uh, you know, we have pre-orders directly from fleets. We have pre-orders from people that sell to fleets because that's the way fleets buy. Fleets don't buy like... In general, they don't buy like consumers buy. They buy through intermediaries. And so all we've done is gone out, gauge interest, because you got a tool for to build something like this in an automated fashion. We're going to build one of these every six minutes. We kind of have to know how to tool, and you got to know about a year in front of your, of your building. So that's what everybody uses pre-orders for. They are always, by definition, non-binding, no money down, cancelable. I mean, that's just, uh, that's the nature of... EV uh, startups trying to get are not soliciting new fleet customer. You remember that was a pretty chaotic time. I believe it's a positive development that model year 2024 fleet ordering for some major OEMs will once again be based on a pre-approved allocation volume. And some might disagree with me and, and I understand why. Admittedly, many fleets will not get all of the vehicles they need based on past experience with an allocation system. But it's better than being on the wrong side of an unexpected early closure of a fleet order bank. You might want to replay that. Orders weren't met last year, and they're going to an allocation program this year for the 2024 model. So in a fleet allocation environment, most OEMs require pre-approval to place orders based on an allocation determined by a fleet's past order volumes. And here's an example of an allocation process for government fleets looking to order the all new 2023 model Ford Super Duty. So the Ford Super Duty will have a short model year with only a limited number of trucks being produced for each government fleet with a Ford FIN number, a fleet identification number, gets an allocation based on their average Super Duty purchases over the past five years. The actual allocation will be approximately 55 to 60 percent of whatever that average number is. And it's not uncommon for most OEMs to restrict fleet order allocations for their legacy customers. In fact, fleet availability being as tight as it's been for the past two years has found that most OEMs are not soliciting new fleet customers. So when you look at the ordering environment from a historical perspective, the transition to a fleet ordering allocation system has truly been a significant milestone that's never before happened in the history of fleet management. The last time end user demand exceeded production capacity was immediately after the conclusion of World War II. As auto manufacturers stopped Ford production and switched back to the production of automobiles, end user demand simultaneously spiked. Parallel in this next section is Soros also didn't like the person elected as president of India, prime minister. And again, there was involvement 
with stocks. And again, Hindenburg was initially involved. It's very similar to the Lordstown case. The OCCRP. Uh, but following side. early acquisitions by Hindenburg Research. These dual incidents, within seven months, link back to billionaire philanthropists George Sor Soros and Open Society Foundations draw criticism as disruptive agents. Soros's latest spotlight is India, with OCCRP alleging Adani Group used opaque Mauritius funds to obscure links with associates. Adani Group claims Soros's linked interest orchestrated these claims. OCCRP, exposing crime globally, lists Soros's Open Society Foundations as donor. Soros' criticisms extend to Modi's policies. In February, he said, PM Modi would have to answer questions from foreign investors and parliament on allegations of fraud and stock manipulation at Gautam Adani's industrial empire. Soros comments on India's Prime Minister through BGP's response, accusing him of undermining democracy. Where people like him think uh, an election is good if the person we want to see wins, if the election throws up a different uh, uh, outcome, then we actually will say it's a flawed democracy. If I could only stop at old, rich and opinionated, I would put it away. But it's old, rich, opinionated and dangerous. Soros's presence recurs, linked to both Hindenburg and OCCRP reports on Adani, highlighting his role in international controversies. Chances are you know this man and know about his shenanigans too. For those who don't, he is George Soros, an American billionaire infamous for meddling in political affairs of other countries. And he is up to it again. A sworn enemy of the Modi government, right after US-based short seller Hindenburg shook the Indian markets with a damning report on Adani Group, an old and feeble Soros appeared in front of cameras and issued a statement which sounded more like a threat. In fact, according to the Enforcement Directorate, it found intelligence about potentially violative and concerted selling by specific parties just ahead of the publication of the Hindenburg report. And this may lead to credible charges of concerted destabilization of the Indian markets. And SEBI ought to be probing such actions under securities laws. Indian market regulator SEBI had observed suspicious trading after Hindenburg published its report. Four FBIs, one body corporate, and one individual came under its radar. Now the question is, how can Indian government and authorities prevent Soros and his lackeys from doing what he seems determined to? My hope for 2024 is that Trump and Governor DeSantis of Florida will slug it out for the Republican nomination. Trump has turned into a pitiful figure, continually bemoaning his loss in 2020. Big Republican donors are abandoning him in droves. DeSantis is shrewd, ruthless, and ambitious. He is likely to be a Republican candidate. Uh, this could induce Trump, whose narcissism has turned into a disease, to run as a third party candidate. That would uh, lead to a democratic landslide and force the Republican Party to reform itself. But perhaps I may be just a little bit biased. President Trump is a con man and the ultimate narcissist who wants the world to revolve around him. When his, when his fantasy of becoming president came true, his narcissism developed a pathological... So Soros is using the same playbook all over the world. Now we come to Terry Gao, who I believe is behind the cancellation of the contract with Lordstown. Donald Trump is showing his Lordstown. willingness to confront Beijing in news comments about the long-standing 
One China policy, you'll recall Trump sparked controversy after taking a call from Taiwan's leader going against usual protocol. Here's what Trump is saying now. I fully understand the one China policy, but I don't know why we have to be bound by a one China policy unless we make a deal with China having to do with other things, including trade. I mean, look, we're being hurt very badly by China with devaluation with uh, taxing us heavy at the borders when we don't tax them. I don't want China dictating to me. And this was a call put into me. I didn't make the call. And it was a call, very short call, saying, congratulations, sir, on the victory. It was a very nice call. Well, Trump said he felt not taking the call from Taiwan's leader would have been disrespectful. Rua 我把你红海财产没收 我说Yes, please, do it 如果我牺牲我个人的财产Honhai founder and presidential hopeful Terry Go is scrambling to explain himself over his remark on Taiwan's sovereignty. He had said, quote, Taiwan is an inseparable part of China to reporters during a flight to Wisconsin last week. Today, Mainland Affairs Council Minister Chen Mingtong publicly condemned Go for the statement, saying he was spreading misinformation to the world. Go says his words were twisted out of context and that the China he referred to was the Republic of China. While well, giving Ohio Secretary of State Frank LaRose a tour of the Lordstown Motors plant today, CEO Steve Burns was asked about the Hindenburg research report. There's always haters. Burns spent time I quoted Taylor Swift as somebody the other day. Haters are going to hate, 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 hate. Yeah. You shake it off. Burns spent firm time has reassuring written. reporters okay. and onlookers. All right, I'm going to stop this here because I have, well, let's, let's hear what he has to say and then can't speak to the Hindenburg report, I can tell you two things. We are at betas in 10 days, and we are at start of production of the world's first electric pickup truck. I mean, I know I say that, that a lot, but think about the gravity of the world's first electric pickup truck starting right here.